Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about amines. These are the second last function group that we need to look at um, in the WACE Year 12 course. So hopefully by the end of this film, you'll know what an amine looks like and how you'd name one. Um, you'd only be naming primary amines. You'll be explaining the physical properties of amines, and hopefully you will know the names of some reactions that they take part in. Okay, here's what an amine looks like. Any molecule that's got this NH2 group in is a primary amine. Okay, um, You can have amines that actually have carbons coming off these two bonds, but they, they're not primary amines anymore. So just like we had primary alcohols that only had one or zero carbons attached to the alcohol carbon, in a primary amine, we've only got one carbon directly attached to the nitrogen. So no carbon containing groups here. They have to be H's. Okay. So in general, we'll have some carbon containing group here, bonded to nitrogen with a single bond, and then two singly bonded hydrogens. Their formulas always end in an H2. So if you've written a formula, or if you're looking at a formula and want to see, is there an amine here, then it's got to end in an H2. Right. Naming amines is quite simple. Um, and it's got some similarities to the things we've looked at before. This amine here has one carbon in the chain, so I start off by calling it methyl, okay, and then I end it by calling it amine because it's got an amine at the end of it. So methylamine or methylamine. This one here has two carbons, so it would be ethyl amine. Now, I suppose it is actually good to be able to identify where the amine is in a molecule. Okay, so this would be different to this amine because the amino group is on the second carbon instead of the third here. So this one would be 2 propylamine, or another way of naming it would be. Um, two amino propane, okay, and this one would be one propylamine. But in actual fact, it's pretty rare that you have to name these things anyway. You just need to know, most of all, about how they react. So um, that's looked at in depth in another film, as usual, but we'll have a look now at their physical properties. Now, what are we expecting to see here? Well, here we've got a highly electronegative element attached to Hydrogen. So these things can hydrogen bond with themselves, and not only can they hydrogen bond with themselves, but they can hydrogen bond with water, and they can hydrogen bond with water in a number of different ways. Okay, so they can form strong hydrogen bonds with water, so we'd expect them to be pretty soluble. And again, as usual, the bigger this nonpolar part of the molecule gets, the less soluble they become. Okay, because this bit doesn't really want to dissolve in water. And as for their melting and boiling points, well, because they can form hydrogen bonds with themselves, they have unusually high boiling points for, molecule, for molecules with their own molecular mass. Okay, so if we were to compare them with some of the other groups that we've looked at so far, we'd expect them to have really quite high boiling points like alcohols, and certainly much higher than um, maybe alkanes of similar molecular mass. Okay, amine reactions. Well, you might remember that ammonia is a base. And amines are basically very much like ammonia, except that instead of having three hydrogens, they've got two and something else attached. And ammonia is able to accept protons, so it's able to act as a base. And that's because of its lone pair. It can, it can form a what's called a dative bond to a proton, but that's not really important in the waste course. Okay, so in just the same way that ammonia can act as a base and accept protons, amines can do exactly the same thing. Okay, they'll also take part in condensation reactions, and in doing so, they'll react with carboxylic acids to produce amides. Now, this sort of condensation reaction is much less commonly seen in tests and exams than an esterification reaction, which is just another example of a condensation reaction, but it is nonetheless something that we need to know about. Okay, um, finally, how do we make amines? Well, the reason this slide is blank is because 
we don't need to worry about how you make amines. Okay, so hopefully, now that we've watched this film, we know what an amine functional group looks like. We can name straight chain primary amines up to eight carbons, although I've never dealt in any of these films with things that go up to eight, but we know the prefixes from the alkanes. Um, we can explain some of the amines physical properties, like their boiling points and solubility, and we know the names of reactions that they take part in. So once again, all that remains is for me to ask you to come and see me if you've got any questions or to post your questions on the comments section of the YouTube.